Cantilevers are one of my all-time favourite architectural features. They are dynamic, modern and practical. I use cantilevers widely in my own projects to provide shade, shelter and a striking visual design element. These features are not common in traditional architecture, at least not where I work, but since I first built one almost a decade ago, clients keep asking for them. These are three quick case studies showing how to build a cantilever roof and why they are such a great feature. These are drawings from the first project where I used a pure cantilever. It was built in 2013. The client wanted a modern garden room and was a fan of mid-century modernism. So I designed a steel frame structure with a cantilevered roof to provide shelter, as well as to give the building a more horizontal emphasis. I hadn't designed a cantilever before, and the contractor hadn't built one either, so I produced these 3D drawings to explain the structure in considerable detail. I worked with a structural engineer to develop the design, but the basic principle is simple. The structure has four steel posts with a steel ring beam to support the floor, and another steel ring beam to support the roof. This is the building under construction. You can see how the timber roof joists sit on the steel ring beam and span outwards. This is the finished building. The underside of the roof was clad in marine plywood and painted with oat paint to provide a long-lasting finish. This was built for a very modest budget, but the end result is amazing, much better than a typical conservatory. This larger house extension was built in 2015, and the client wanted to create a dramatic entrance to a split-level, open-plan, kitchen-living-dining space. The design has several cantilevers, including a mezzanine level overlooking the new living area. The new entrance has a whopping cantilever to provide shelter, but also to visually signify the location of the doorway. The area of the roof was large, and I worked hard to design the structure so that the edge looked as thin as possible. This involved using a footnote in the building regulations, which allows any area of roof less than 8 square metres to free drain, that is, to drip over the edge without needing a gutter or downpipe. The entire extension is steel frame, with a timber frame infill. This photo shows how the cantilever was achieved by propping the steel beams on a post and pinning the opposite end to the existing house. The timber frame infill doesn't just fill in the blank space, it provides rigidity to the overall structure. The cantilever is very strong. The joiner who built it was known as Big Darren and weighed over 20 stone, that's about 130 kilos. The end result is a dramatic and spatially complex new addition to a suburban home. This project was built in 2020 and I have made a detailed video documenting the design and build process. The cantilever was a major part of the overall design, providing shade to the large area of south-facing glazing and shelter outside the patio doors, so the client could leave them open more often. The structure was steel frame with timber infill. This detailed drawing shows how the design incorporated several complex elements, including a concealed gutter with hidden drainage. To minimise the visual impact of the roof, the edge of the cantilever was made as thin as possible. These are just three projects where I used cantilevers successfully. There are a few things to remember when designing a cantilever. 1. Be clear from the outset why you are designing a cantilever. They can be complex and expensive to build, so there needs to be a definite need for one. 2. As a rule of thumb, the span should be no more than one-third the overall length of the beam. Consult a structural engineer as early as possible in the design process. 3. Take care the beam does not introduce cold bridging into the heated space, as part of the beam will be outside and part inside. This can cause heat loss and condensation, which can damage the building over time. 4. Think about drainage. Where will the rainwater go? 5. Go big or go home. If you are going to build a cantilever, build a big one. My name is Neil and I've been a self-employed sole practitioner architect in the UK since 2009. I make videos every week on the reality of being an architect today. If you want to see more, hit subscribe.